I want to be a tennis player. Where, where does that desire come from? Where is the source of it? What really all of a sudden motivates you to be very much interested, like, I don't know, you're interested in astrology, you're interested in the lives of ants or bees, or somebody's interested in consciousness, somebody's very much interested in engineering. They have no interest in spirituality. How do we come on this spiritual path? Before I knew about spirituality, I meet so many people. Like in my family, I have friends that they have no interest in spirituality. If I start talking about these things, to them it's bullshit. It's a waste of time. How come they didn't come to this path? And something brought me to this path. Did I choose that? It was a choice before I was born. Did I decide on that? Or it was decided for me? That too is unknown. It's unknown to me. Hi, Karen. Come on on. Hello, hello. Hi. Do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. But you know... Many people, they talk about this, that you, you cannot control the events uh, or the desires or whatever, right? Maybe you cannot control uh, this in a free will, right? But uh, you have the free will to uh, choose uh, how you deal with it or how you feel about it. Or you can train yourself and... Uh, what perspective you have about it, right? Okay. Um, what do you think about that? Yeah, it appears, it appears to be able to, that you have some kind of control or you can choose to do this or that. It appears to be that way. It looks like it. It feels like it, and it touches like it. But when I go deeper, I realize that there's nothing I can do. Yeah. And then, you know, people, they say like, uh, yeah, but you have created this uh, unconsciously, right? Yeah. Or existence, or like, um, it's like... Um, Maybe not only you, but uh, like uh, a cooperation between you and maybe a family member or a friend has like unconsciously created this, right? Right, right, right. exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about it. A lot of people say you unconsciously created this situation or you brought this misery upon yourself. Yeah. Uh, there's all sorts of different school of thoughts. My direct experience is that uh, I don't have any free will. And there's nothing I can do outside of what is written. And what that which runs the world and show is operating through me. And then when I look around, I see the same thing. But that's my direct experience. And you must understand, it took me 30 years to come to this understanding. It just didn't happen overnight. Even though my teacher told me about it over and over again, and I repeated this like a parrot over and over again, but it wasn't my direct experience until 2011. So... You have to find it for yourself. I can only point out that this is the way. That's all I can do. 
because people come and tell me, well, you seem like you found an inner peace or you're very calm or you discovered something inside you or your aura or your presence is different or whatever. What did you do? How did you come to this? I can only point out the direction. Because basically, I don't like to suffer. I don't want to suffer. And when I came across Master Punjaji in India, I realized that this man has realized something that I don't know. This man has come to inner peace. This guy, this man has found silence. And I want what he has. So I dedicated the next 30 years of my life to get and find what he had found. And of course, it was a journey. It included five near-death experiences. It included being extremist. It included addictions to drug, alcohol, sex, and danger. I had to go through all of it before it revealed itself. But even that, now I realize, wasn't my choice. And the more I settle into this understanding, the less my mind comes and boggles. The more it's this understanding that all is well and everything is taken care of. I do, do not need to worry. And of course, action happens. You're still going to do things. But you do it from no mind. You do it from this place that no matter what decision you make, no matter what you do, is exactly what existence wants to do. And you just went and bought... $50,000 worth of Bitcoin at $38,000, and then Bitcoin went to $34,000. So you're going to beat yourself up. How stupid am I? And why didn't I wait for an, another day to buy it cheaper? That's because exactly life wanted you to do it in that way. So when you realize that, then you just relax. Ah, oh, okay. Ha. Ah. You can settle into it. So your mistakes are not really mistakes. They're exactly what they were meant to be. You were meant to make that mistake. It looks like a mistake, but this is exactly what you had to do because you did it. And I'll... So then you don't go back and beat yourself up. Maybe you do it for a minute or two or five minutes. The mind comes very strongly and says, oh, you idiot, you did this, you're so stupid, you never learn. And then you don't hear anything else, it's finished. And then you may do something that leads you to something amazing. And again, you don't really pat yourself and say to yourself, oh, wow, I'm so smart. The mind will do it, but you don't buy it anymore. You are becoming neutral to the failures and to victories. You don't claim any of them. And you become free. Freedom, you become free from it. You become free from these ups and downs. But that freedom has a price. The price is to give up the free will to the will of the Allah. You give up your free will to the will of God. God, run me. Whatever. Whatever you, whatever I surrender, whatever is your desire. Run this guy. Then there is no conflict. 
and peace takes over. And there's nothing in this world more worthy than inner peace. And there's nothing in this world worse than inner conflict. We all know that. You know that. 